What's that brimmy? Just this typical, typical standard day in Australia. <laughs> just testing the temperature. Now up to the roof. This is why I've got like clear sheets up here. It's not just for light. Like if you look at, I don't know if it shoots on the gun, but the steel sheets are 53 degrees. And the clear sheets are 37. So that's 54 degrees. Like an oven, like that's how like an oven works, like convection. It's putting 54 degrees of heat into here versus like 37 degrees of this of the clear sheets. But I want to put a Turbo 400 gearbox behind this because a Turbo 400 will you know, hold a hell of a lot more horsepower than current Jacko gearbox uh, does that we've got in the old project car. So in order to do that, well, I need to somehow adapt the engine to the transmission. Now the Turbo 400 is a GM based transmission and all the bell housings pretty much on the market are GM based or to suit a Ford or whatever, nothing to suit a rotary. Uh, I believe there is one transmission bell housing out there that is to suit a rotary. However, I think you still need to use an adapter plate. I'm not quite sure, but I know it's about $1,500 to buy. What I'm going to try and do here is mimic the rear mount starter on the, on the Jatco and sort of cut an area out of this and weld a pocket in so I can fit this type of starter right here. The reason why I'm having to do this is because, as you can see, the FD auto factory auto bell housing has a much different starter orientation and how it mounts on the bell housing in the engine than it does on say an earlier engine here you can see just like in the manual the early autos mount the starter motor uh, just here sort of basically so because they mount there it's much easier to obviously work on and get in and out but they're less bulky and they're less ugly but the main issue is the fd uh, the way it mounts on an FD, and same as a, a, a JC Cosmo, is the rear plate of the actual engine also has mounting for the auto uh, starter motor. So not only do you have to run the auto bell housing, you also have to run a rear plate that has the provision for the auto. Now, um, that could be fine. I could go out and get an FD rear auto uh, plate for my engine, but first I'd have to find one. And that, you know, even if I found one brand new, that'd be about another... $1,500 or so. If I found a used one, it might be like six, seven, eight hundred dollars $800. Or um, if I was to go down the path of a billet engine in this thing or billet rear front plate in that, uh, I don't think there's any manufacturer offering the auto style mounting plate for a billet engine. So again, we'd be into a major problem. So I've done some more work on the rear end, as you can see, visually you can see the easy parts, like the, the brake lines are, are in, and up above here is a trans cooler. So obviously just had the one mount in place while I was doing uh, the anti-roll bar and, and the shock mounts and that, but I want to obviously either triangulate it or tie it all into the rear a bit, a bit better. So I've just put a second bar in here, and that meant I had somewhere to mount the trans cooler. So trans cooler's back here, just so if for some reason drop some fluid or whatever, for some reason it drops here and yes, you drop it on the track and the track can be cleaned up. You drop it on a tire, um, you could be cleaning up more than a little oil spill. So that's back here. You can be cleaning up your underpants. <laughs> you can clean up your underpants and put, clean them up in, in hospital pissing in a bear pen. The trans cooler can be mounted up here because it's got its own fan. So it's got its own sort of cooling thing. It doesn't have to be in direct airflow. Uh, we only run it. Is that from the 626? Yep, that's, um, I think this is, the engine and these, this is the only the only two parts that remain from the 626. So yeah, I've got that there. And then I've just quickly drawn a hole through here and tacked some stuff in place. And I just had a little plate there to hold it in place while I was welding it. Uh, and this will be the parachute mount. So what I'll do is I'll cut this a little bit shorter and this will be the mount that actually, when the chute gets deployed, pulls back on the car yeah. when, it, um, when the chute blossoms out. And I'll just um, mount something else off here that I'll put a bolt through that comes up here and holds the chute. I think that's pretty much it for the rear. Obviously you need to do some tidying up work with the chassis because I've cut old brackets out and I've only cut them to clearance. I haven't cut them to be neat at the moment. So I'll get that done. And then, yeah, I'll eventually plate over the top of here. And what I think I'll do is I'll just put rivnuts all the way around 
So fitting the transmission, you saw just then we had to custom make the bell housing, which meant even if we weren't custom making it, it would be an off the shelf one where uh, we would have had to do some tunnel work, which is what we've done. And yeah, unfortunately, we have this giant gaping hole in the tunnel, but it is yeah, what it is. the wells off the manifold, right there. <laughs> this is just the easy way to do it. Yes, I've got a giant hole here now in the tunnel. However, what I'll do is I'll just make a thin steel um, sort of yeah concave pocket here, and I'll probably just bolt it in, uh, and that'll be easier than trying to weld to this like one mil thin, extra, extra thin sort of steel. Uh, that's normally a total pain to weld to. So, but then that way I can easily just take it out if I need to access the starter, uh, if I need to give it a tap or something, because once the starter motor's in here, there's just no chance of getting to it. It's gonna be really difficult. So like the 66, you're using the Davies Craig electric water pump? Yes, this is the uh, same water pump off the 66 as well. So it's just Davies Craig one again. I've got Davies Craig 14 inch fan coming for, for this. Um, but what I had to do, the Mishimoto, the Honda radiator had like a one inch um, radiator outlet. So I've just cut it off and I've put uh, the one and a, I think it's one and three quarter, which is like what all the, the Mazda sort of stuff is. So, uh, or one and a half it might actually be, I think one and a half. And yeah, I've just made one big uh, hard line sort of thing to here, then just a 90 straight into the pump, straight into there. And you can see that it's sort of, it's just supported by that. A lot of people hard mount these pumps, but it says pretty clearly in instructions yeah. that they're just meant to be supported in the radiator hose. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, that's what I've done. And it's pretty much all coming together now. I've manualized the steering rack. So you can see now there's no, you know, there's no cool, uh, there's no power steering lines running to this. It's all manualized. And I took the seal out and everything like that. So this is our big banger Hughes Performance Turbo 400. And you can see I've got my phone here because I have no idea about what happens in here. This is like complete black art to me. So there is plenty different about this Turbo 400 than your off the shelf or factory Turbo 400 that you find in like old 50s, 60s, 70s, whatever GM vehicles. Uh, it's a fair bit bigger than the Jatco that we've got just sitting down over there. And the reason for that is just reliability. I am a jack of all trades, master of none at all, but there is one thing I don't touch and it is autos. This is a factory GM case. It's got a Hughes four inch extension housing. So this housing is normally a fair bit longer and mm. Hughes make a, a cast yeah, one. So it, it does look shorter. It, um, it's a little shorty one there. It's got resurfaced GM pump stator, uh, half with a Sonax heat treated steel pump stator tube, whatever. <laughs> Hughes billet pump adjustable pressure regulator. Yep, uh, that's probably inside of it somewhere. Um, GM pump body gears, they've lapped in clearance, so they're all good to go again. So a lot of these, the people, the reason that people run GM Turbo 400 to start with is that they're actually a very beefy and strong box out of the factory. So that's why a lot of the factory components just keep on getting reused because they're actually good enough for it. Uh, Hughes Pro Series two-stage torque converter dump valve. So you can see over this side, this is where there's a lot of very different sort of stuff than you see a normal. Normal, you see this, I think this is called the governor plate or whatever, that wouldn't have anything on it. Um, this wouldn't be here. And this would be your normal uh, uh, transmission cooler outlet line. So what we've got is we've got that dump valve system we're looking at where, um, you know, this runs to one of the dump valves, this runs to another, these two run to another dump valve. And then these are now your cooler lines. And you can see inside of this cooler line also here, uh, there's a restrictor. So there's like a little jet in there and that's how they tune up, I guess, what, what the pressure of the whole system and, and how, uh, how it works. They roughly explain what it dump, what the dump system's for. So the dump system, the stall converter does, you know, it obviously takes derived torque or torque coming in from the engine to turn the, turn the torque converter to put power out the back of it. What the dump valves can do is actually change that stall speed. So it, it bleeds away converter pressure um, going into and out for the, the, the two stage in this one to make the stall speed higher. So it can actually, you know, we can put less torque in to make it mm. work better. Which is pretty critical in a Mazda engine really, isn't it? Yeah, well, I mean- It's not and, a big torquey engine. Yeah, like and, and a lot of guys with um, big powerful V8s will use it as well to, um, to use it for power management. So if you can make the converter slip, so to speak, a little bit, you can use it for power management in low, low gears. And um, some of the guys also might 
pulse it when you change gears so it doesn't you know there's not that harsh shift you know if you've got we're not obviously going to make 1500 plus horsepower or whatever but there's guys out there with like turbo v8s and making 1500 2000 two and a half three thousand whatever horsepower and you know that they they want a really tight converter f- to lock up you know when um in the in the top end of the track so they can get as much mile an hour as they can but they also need to you know you need to be able to bring up and convert to burnouts and leave on the trans brake so this is sort of the best of both worlds. You can have a very tight converter, but you can also still enable it to come up on the trans brake properly. So the long of the short, it's like the VTEC of transmissions. <laughs> <laughs> it's the it's the low RPM VTEC, yeah. So it'll help us run a much tighter converter, so it'll mile an hour better. Yeah. Um, so we can actually use the power from the engine and not just rattle it up in heat in a converter. Uh, and it'll be much tighter converter and we can, yeah, obviously use that power better. So that's our old dump valves. Uh, then we've got a Hughes 300M solid billet steel input shaft with oversized forward drum spline. That's very important, the oversized forward drum spline. So this is the input shaft. So that's a 300M. So there's, I think there's Vasco steel and 300M or whatever is the, is the medius of the medi. So um, that's pretty common in upgrade for just about any transmission is the input shaft. So that's a rock solid one. GM forward drum brooch with oversized spline. Cool, got to have one of those oversized splines. Sonex, Sonex is a brand, they make a lot of transmission components. So Sonex 4140 forged nitrated treated steel forward clutch hub. So that's in here somewhere. GM aluminium clutch apply pistons. Yep, definitely got one of them. Rossler billet aluminium direct drum suit. This is some of the stuff where people go like, oh, why have you got a turbo 400? They, they sap so much power. But yeah. when you put components like this, like a Rossler billet aluminum direct drum, the parasitic loss and the amount of effort it takes to drive the transmissions significantly less than those big steel GM sort of ones. So these are the kind of things that, that will make this transmission a lot more efficient than just a factory GM one, um, which is why I'm not overly worried about it taking all my power away or whatever. So doesn't matter, just turn the boost up a couple more pounds anyway and make your own horsepower. So, uh, Borg Warner 34 element intermediate sprag, 8620 billet steel intermediate inner sprag race, GM intermediate outer sprag race, GM direct hub, Hughes 300M billet steel direct pressure plate. It's probably in here. There's all this stuff is in here and you can't see it anyway. I love it. So, Hughes H11 billet steel intermediate shaft. I assume that's somewhere in here. Tree killer. Tree killer. The tree killer. That's not me, I was asleep on the tree always. Valve body, first and second gear trans brake feature. So that's really important for guys with big, big torquey engines on sometimes marginal tracks, which means you can actually leave on the trans brake in second gear, not just first gear. So not so much for low torque engines like this, but guys with big V8 driven six cylinders, they can actually leave the line in second gear instead of leaving it at first. So the trans brake, normally you see a massive sort of solenoid hanging off on a lot of cars. It's in this transmission, you may have seen other cars too where the reverse lights come on in, in some transmissions and you're like, why are they on the trans brake in reverse? This is the reverse light switch, but it also acts as the trans brake um, instigator, so to speak. So I'll run power to this and reverse light switch and that is what activates the trans brake in this transmission. It, it's all internal. It doesn't have a big external sort of solenoid in that. So, but um, yeah, we've got the tree killer billet aluminium valve body in there. Tree so killer. that's a good name. We've got the big Hughes custom uh, aluminium sump and it's got a magnetic drain plug in there too. So if you pull out, you know, drop the fluid or whatever and there's a whole heap of stuff left on that, it's, uh, it's game over. Durabond dry film coated bushings, PTFE ceiling rings, and it was also dyno tested to verify shift function, trans brake function, line pressure, cooler pressure and the cooler flow. So yeah, there's a lot of work that goes on in this transmission when they put the uh, dump valve system in and they've set up everything. So that jet in there and all that stuff, this has all been wet tested on a dyno at Hughes so that um, we can put it in the car and know that uh, it won't have any problems. So any future problems are my problem. This is why you go to like professionals like Hughes because they know where you can get away with running yes. GM yep. and they know where you have to run like 300M billet, whatever steel or whatever. So. Uh, this trans was built specifically for this car. So this is, I think Hughes make like a thousand horsepower and then it jumps up to like 1500 horsepower. 
uh, and they said in a car of this kind of weight, this is like their thousand horsepower trans, but it'd probably be fine up to 1200 or whatever so horsepower in a, in a car of this weight. So um, we'll only be making like half that. So it doesn't really matter because it's only got a little rotor so 600 horsepower sounds about right. So um, maybe if we ever put like a, an LS in it, you know, we can, uh, we'd have to turn the LS down 1200 horsepower because they make them just sneezing. But um, yeah, the, I wanted something that was sort of 1200-ish horsepower rated because yes, it's got the rotary in it now, but like we've said, look, Prue says the rotary has to be in there forever and a day. There's no, nothing. Oh, hang on, you said there. you'd never have an LS in this. Ever. No, I didn't say that. Did I? I can't see you pulling a Mazda engine in. I don't I, think so. No, you never know, but... You want to leave the rotary in. So these are the dump valves. You can get a single stage or a dual stage. This is the dual stage. So it's, I think it bleeds converter pressure coming into the converter as well as it going out of it, um, which means you can artificially affect the stall. So the main thing we'll be using this for, a lot of people use it for on the trans brake as well as power management going down the strip. But what, what we'll mainly use it for is just on the trans brake, but we'll also use it in combination with, with nitrous. So uh, we'll, as soon as the trans brake gets, button gets activated, the PDM actually switches these on um, based on certain parameters. And then it'll also turn the nitrous on and then it'll turn these off by, just say we're gonna build 15 PSI on the trans brake. Once it gets to like eight or 10 PSI, the engine will be making enough torque that we don't need to sort of activate these things. So we'll probably turn the nitrous off then because what this is doing is it's bypassing the transmission cooler circuit. It's just dumping that fluid out of the converter and dumping it straight back into the pan. So it's not cooling in that fluid and it's making an incredible amount of heat. So the least amount of time we can operate these, the better it is for the longevity yeah. of the transmission and the heat in it. You've got a few more bits bolted on here, I see. We're continuing, obviously, with um, finalizing all the things in place and that. So got all our speed flow hoses. I've got a couple more in place now. Uh, and this is why you need to mount things in place because I, I mounted, I had this actually, this um, the, the TurboSmart fuel pressure rig here, but it was mounted loosely. So this hose actually was running off this way before and I thought it was okay, but now what it screwed on hard, yeah, it's sort of almost running a bit further here. So I'll, I'm gonna obviously have to make something to hold the hoses there, which I knew anyway, but this is the whole reason why you have to mount components where they're actually gonna go and hard mount them. Otherwise you can run into tiny little clearance issues. I might run a water pressure sensor. You know, that might be able to, an early indicator if, if there's some kind of O-ring failure or something like that, that if there's a spike mm. in water pressure when we're under boost, then that yeah. could mean that there's something leaking into the water yeah. pressure system. So better to find that early through data than not. So I'll see what some of the yeah some of the wiring coming through the firewall there. Yeah, so we've got the the two bulkheads here, and all the wiring's just being basically routed to where it needs to go. So what I'll do is instead of these wires just resting on the engine, once this pipe's all made, I'll put a little tab off that, and I'll probably tie them up like that so they're mm. just not resting on the heat or whatever. But the, the DCI heat sh uh, shield for the wiring shield that I've used here is, yeah. is very heat rate rated anyway, so it wouldn't make a difference. But um, yeah, we've got the mechanical pump there, all the speed flow lines, got the two filters that we've seen before. Now I've got the, um, the South Coast Rotary manifold and plenum on here. I was going to maybe change this out for the plasma man throttle body that we had. However, because this is 90 mil and the plasma man one is 85 mil, it um it just won't fit. It's the, the hole inside of here is designed for that 90 mil, yeah. Uh, and it the, it just yeah it wouldn't fit. I'd have to make like an adapter plate and all this kind mm. of stuff. And it's like this is bolt on. Um, already making enough stuff as it is. The plasma man piece is killer, but so much stuff already to make on the yeah, car, just, yeah. just gonna make life harder than it probably needs to be. So, and the only other thing now I can do is with the trans here, it all mounted and hard mounted, so I can make the dump pipe. So this will be a five inch dump pipe. It'll come out here. Uh, I'll probably cut some of this away still. Um, so it'll come out here, down over a bit, and then out of the guard out here. And what I'll also do is I was considering, I think last time we were here, we were, I was gonna run these down this way both of them down this way. But I thought, why just put extra heat yeah, through yeah. the manifold and that and all here to heat soak all this area and also methanol fumes down that way. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna aim this 
that way, and I think I'll leave that one there. And this one can just go into the dump pipe, just and this one can go pipe. around, and also run the dump pipe. And I'll just run those little stainless That's how all screamer bellows. pipes, well, wastegate pipes should be run. Yeah, yeah plumb them back in. Well, it's Plum not a barret. In. This thing sounds all right with yeah, um, the screamer pipe. So, but I mean, it'll still be a screamer pipe because the exhaust is like just one big seven hundred mil long. Yeah. So. And then, yeah, and then I'll weld a V-band on the end of the five-inch dump pipe over here so I can mount it up to, I'll, I'll like run a like a five-inch to four-inch reducer and yeah. then I'll run it to there. So You can at least run it in here. Yeah, so I can run it in here and then I'll run it through my awesome custom muffler set up there. But then also when we go to the dyno, yeah, you can plug it up and get some of the methanol fumes evacuated because those things are, um, it's bad enough like dyno and cars on 98 and E85, but methanol's a um, pretty serious deal. It's pretty toxic stuff, so... Yeah, it's pretty much coming along now. We need to sort out the injectors. I'm just, I've just got some lines run now. So got to sort out what injectors I'm going to run. I've got some deckers I'm going to run for the primaries, but I don't know if I'm going to run all deckers or if I'm going to run some other injectors. I know FuelTech got injectors out now. Keen observers might know that I changed something back here a fair bit. So um, we were while we were waiting for the, the wheels and that to turn up, I sort of started making some of the chassis stuff anyway, sort of on the hoist and not that I rushed into it, but there was a, a fair time delay on, on getting some parts sometimes. And I thought, oh, I'll just make it anyway. And what I found was I didn't like where, how low or how high before these um, falling brackets, the, the pronine falling brackets where I had mounted them. So before they were mounted up here, this bar, and as you can see, I've dropped it like about three inches. And now I can properly get some decent angles on these bars. They run these top bars at about 10 to 15 degrees down I run the bottom bar at about six degrees or so, six to eight degrees up. And I just couldn't get enough. And you can see now they're in the middle bolt. Before I had it in the bottom hole just to get 10 degrees and I had nowhere else to go. So I didn't, um, yeah, made that poor decision where I was making that. But now obviously it's, yeah, all it is, it's the best part oh, about steel is good. why I like working with it, cut it out and start again. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but that's pretty much near. Got a little bit to go. Obviously you need to box these in so you don't see that. I need a box the tops of these in properly that the strut towers that aren't made and then make a plate over the top but it's um it's pretty much it's pretty much it once you put the dash and the seat back in here it'll look pretty finished now my door trim so i've got the raceworks carbon fiber here i'll i'll put that over there and um yeah probably got to paint silver the rest of the red stuff so i've just got to mask up the entire cage and then just paint bomb it mm -hmm. and then uh and then it won't look like so much of a patchwork quilt like it does at the moment. Make sure you don't miss any of the build by liking and subscribing to the channel. It's got a uh, an impotence problem. I need some Viagra. It's not a. It's not a. It's feeling a bit old.